Hi, this is Seb Castillo. I'm an animator and freelance photographer and cinematographer. And this is my first video review. I'll be looking at the Fujifilm 23mm F2 WR. Just to spoil things a little bit, I'm going to go out and say now that I actually prefer the 1.4. Okay, let's get to it. Okay, so here we have the 23mm F2 WR. It's a fully metal construction. And as you can see, it is actually quite small. But I believe it could be a lot smaller. Look at this Canon STM 22mm uh, for the Canon M series, the Canon mirrorless series. It's a pancake and it's F2. And the quality from what I've read, it's still pretty good. So you can see that this is actually quite long. Um, to better illustrate this, I'll show you the 35 millimeter F1.4. Here it is. So you can see that the 35 is, has a larger aperture, sorry, larger front diameter, but it's actually shorter. And I actually prefer the shorter size because it just looks better. This kind of sticks out in a weird, ugly way on the camera. But of course, that's just an aesthetic thing. What I really want to mention is that whilst the 1.4 is bigger, I actually don't think it makes a huge difference. The 1.4 is 120 grams heavier which makes it 300 grams. Okay, so there is a size difference, but let me show you the camera, sorry, the lens mounted on a camera. This is the Fujifilm X-T10. Here it is. And then, so yeah, the, the WR is maybe only a centimeter or two shorter. Uh, the front diameter is a lot narrower, but that doesn't really make a difference to when you're carrying it, to be honest. Now I'm going to tell you the main reason why I enjoy using the 1.4 more than the WR, and that's because of the clutch focus. Unlike many mirrorless lenses, this has a manual focus ring that has stops on the end and numbers numbers indicating the distance and it works really well actually it works almost as nicely as a true manual focus lens and you may think that well what's the point this the focus system is already pretty good in both lenses but the reality is that sometimes you want to focus on something that's quite specific like a small like say a piece of corn in a cornfield and sometimes your focus won't nail that that particular corn you want and so it's actually really nice to be able to just quickly uh, push this back or pull this back and focus on it with the focus speaking of course you can with the WR you can switch the the focus toggle to manual but it's a very awkward thing to do when you're out and trying to capture things quickly to switch between the three different options. It's much nicer to just do that. And there you go, that's the main reason. Also, some people complained about the aperture ring on this lens being really too smooth, but I honestly cannot tell much of a difference. It's, it's definitely more dampened on the WR, but the one on the one before is really not much difference. Okay, so just a quick one on focus speed. In my opinion, that the focus speed is very similar on with both lenses. the The main difference is that the one point four is a lot louder. Well, a lot, not. It's a lot louder in the sense that it's louder than the WR because the WR is almost silent. But it's really not that noticeable. Let me just put this to my mic. 
you can hear it. So that first noise, the is the aperture clicking. The second noise is the actual focus. If silence is a big deal to you, then of course get the WR. But it would be really nice to have this lens with a silent motor. Come on, Fuji. I hope you're listening to this. So just to demonstrate the focus speed, this is the 23 millimeter 1.4, and here we go. Okay, so now this is the 23 millimeter f2 WR. Okay, so I totally forgot to change the focus on that video there. But you get the point, you can you could see the green uh, squares and the sounds and you'd see that although the WR is faster and it's uh, it seems to hunt slightly less, there really is, it, there's not that much to it. Okay, so now we're moving on to the image quality part of the review. And beyond build quality, beyond AF speed, I think this is the main reason why you should consider the 1.4 above the WR. Okay, so here I am being shot with the 23mm f1.4 and there's one, there's a couple of things that I want you to notice when I switch over to the WR. Um, I'll talk about them when I switch over, but for now just look at me, look at the background and then cut. Okay, so now we're on the 23mm FTWR and okay, so the first thing you should notice is that it's a wider frame. You can see slightly more of the edge. Um, I really, that's a really strange thing because both are obviously meant to be the same focal length and yet this one appears to be one or two millimeters wider. Don't know if that's because of focus breathing, I don't think so. Because when I shoot an infinity shot, shoot at infinity, you can still see the difference in framing. The second difference is the colour. Oh, the third thing I almost forgot, obviously, is the background blur. You can definitely tell that there's more I don't know why I'm looking behind me because I can't see the background blur, but you should be able to see the background blur. You can see that it's it's an obvious difference. Um, it it may it, it's kind of subtle, but you'll see it, and you'll see it especially uh, when someone's closer as well. Those bokeh balls are just slightly bigger. I mean, slightly it should be noticeably bigger. And for me, as a bokeh lover, it just wins out. Okay, talking about sharpness now. I think sharpness matters, but only up to a point. These modern lenses, they're all, most of them are so sharp anyway that they're much sharper than when you shoot on film. The thing is that just, it, the sharpness doesn't make a difference to whether an image is good or not. You don't go, oh, this image is great because it's sharp. You say it's great because of composition, lighting, uh, posing, uh, all that kind of thing. But sharpness doesn't make an image. Having said that, like I said, there needs to be a minimal amount of sharpness. And I think both these lenses are fine. Uh, in the background you'll see uh, comparison images now. And as you'll see, wide open, they're about the same. There's barely anything to them and when you stop them down, they're, bet they're a bit better. That's all really, they're just, they're, very, they're both very sharp, wide open and stop down. One thing about lenses that I am quite particular about is flares. A lot of lenses do them wrong. So let's just have a quick look at this. This is the 23mm F2 WR. As the camera pans round, you'll see that 
there's just a weird kind of a watery effect in the flow. Now if we look at the the uh, 1.4, that effect is not present, and in fact, there's quite a nice halo type of effect going on. So, we come to the final part of the review, the conclusion. Should you buy or should you not buy the 23mm F2WR? Or should you get the F1.4WR, not the WR, just the non-WR? Okay, so first of all, the 23mm F2WR is a great lens. It's a great lens. Is it better than the lens on the X100S? Yes, it's faster. It's much faster than the one on the X100S. I, I hate that lens because it's so slow. Now, whether or not you should get the F1.4 rather than the 23mm F2. Well, let's go through things. Okay, build quality. They're both metal builds. They're both nice in the hand. Um, they're both quite light. This one is lighter, but not a huge difference. It's small as well, not a huge difference either. It's faster to focus, but doesn't make it, it's not a huge deal faster. The disadvantage it has is that it doesn't have the focus clutch mechanism that the F1.4 does. Uh, I think that that focus clutch is really important for both photographers and video videographers especially. Uh, bokeh, bokeh on the 1.4 is obviously better, even at f2 it's better. Um, sharpness, not much between them. I think the 1.4 is slightly sharper but it doesn't, it's, there's nothing to it. Rendition, I prefer the 1.4's rendition of their skin. It's also slightly less contrasty. It's slightly more natural. So the final thing that you will probably want to consider is the price. I got this lens new for £420. Uh, you can get it on the grey market for 370 And you can get the 1.4 for about 480 used. And to me that is the better deal. For me, the 1.4 being a stop faster, better bokeh, manual clutch focus ring, it's better, it's a better deal. It's, it's more expensive by, so if you compare the grey market price with the used price of the 1.4, the 1.4 is about £100 more expensive. So if you can dig a little bit deeper in your pocket, I would definitely get the 1.4. If not, still a good buy. And that's it. This video took a lot longer to make than I thought it would, being my first video and all. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, please like and subscribe. If you didn't, tell me to stuff. Yeah, all right, see you next time. There's one thing I wanna say, which is that, ooh, cat.